Well, if K3 looks like it is up, so audio balancing maybe slightly off, but I think it's all going through, which is the important part. So I think that we are good to begin. I, sh I believe I already have these replays downloaded. The preview... Yeah, that window projector should be good for us here. Okay, so Mitsubishi Zones is the first of these. Okay, so y'all just grab some from a couple of Last open, a couple of open sessions, just practicing. Yep. All right. Yeah. So enemy team comp is completely irrelevant because that they're not a team, but I can see. So it seems like you have the the pencil, the stamper, Nuvo, and the Tetatech as a kind of staple, maybe flex a hero shot, and then you have a kind of third swap in for the situation? Uh, pretty much, yeah. We always have someone running, yeah. one or two people always running Slayer backline, and yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we have like, nice. like, I'm just token backline, I only backline, and then... Like and I'm actually like to trying to learn Stamper, so honestly, if you're yeah, this is also my first practice with pencil. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. I mean, if you're gonna be doing only backline, yeah, taking pencil in is a pretty good idea. Yeah, that's yeah, it's meta right now. So I, like, yeah, I it's time to it. <laughs> it's time to be meta. <laughs> oh yeah, no fun allowed. <laughs> Alright. Opening positions were pretty good. I don't see why you dropped as the pencil there. It looked like you dropped off the left ledge. Yeah, I think that was an accident. Gotcha. I was going to say, you definitely... If that was just a mechanics thing, I mean... the Going from the slight position is really good. The drop is deadly. Not much more to be said than that. I like the dynamo getting set up on that right side. If you're ever going to have to play this map, that's probably a pretty strong thing to do on it. Yeah, I was just trying out Dynamo. I was just playing around with it. I'm not a Dynamo main. I was just uh, playing around with it while we were sure. doing practice. We were very much playing weapons we weren't familiar with besides the T-Tech. Makes sense. Are you playing that Dynamo more as a mid-range option? Yeah. Alright, um, D Dynamo is, I would say, a little bit better now, especially with the buff. But um, oh, yeah. if you guys are looking it's... for a decent mid-line option, try Nautilus. It's in such a good spot. I do... You don't have to necessarily do midline though. If you you already have a stamper and a pencil, that last slot like that's kind of a comfort slot in a comp like this. I'd say the most important thing is probably making sure you have either a good bomb or a good special or both. Right. Yes. So stampers the thing. I have to say the you you could run double midline and stamper. It would be awkward to do so. Thumps is, yeah, it's a refill. That's that's probably the best way to use it in general. <laughs> Ink refill. I like... I want to look at this fight at left side, because I, I like I like repressuring the left, and I think that with a little more setup, that goes really well. Like here, looking at the gal that was pressing your pencil very, very strong. For the... Alright, so we look at T-Tech perspective here. This really good. Moving up here is good, but you don't really want to. You're rounding the corner with strikes, and you can see there's a person sharking that just goes right for you. So with strikes in general, be aware of how vulnerable you become the moment you use it. As as a frontliner myself, I have found that my automatic instinct every time I see someone ever <laughs> use tri strike is run at them immediately. Makes sense. So you wanna. You want to do that from safe positions, which means you might have wanted to go back up the sponge there. The other option here is, if you want to push that side, 
throw a bomb to clear and have your stamper come down and help you in a fight, because they trade you back in, but if y'all actually fought together as a unit there, you could have cleared that space really effectively. You know, they throw mm -hmm. if they find out that the thought is there, they throw a mist on them, y'all are gonna get that kill. The rest of this though, really good, just good motion forward. I think that once you're in a situation like this as a backline though, I want to see you moving up more. Kind of the moment, the moment that you had the two people down on zone, you, I think you want to move up to at least the, the truck on your side of the map. Mm -hmm. Just because from where you are right now, if the enemy's pushing back into mid, you're not going to be really contesting them until they're already kind of on their truck and try to take back the side of the zone. You can get you can get control onto their platform. Okay, I see you do move up here. So actually, never mind. You pretty much did do that just on reaction time. I guess just make that faster. Like that's the mm -hmm. that's the best thing then. Um it's okay. They're they're using specials to get back in. Sometimes if their if the enemy team is using specials and you're not super set up to oppose them it's better to draw back and let generally let them, you know, use the utility, get the space, and keep yourselves alive to preserve your own utility. I like this poking. I like this. I see Kate. Mm. Gal gets you stuck because you had both kind of grouped up. That's one thing mm -hmm. I found is kind of hard not to do as Stamper, but is a really important thing to do. Is you usually do not want to end up in the same place as your backline player. Because you, Snapper likes to get into those kind of high up positions where it can threaten people from a range. But if you stand on top of your back line, you're going to find that you just don't feel that effective. Yeah, that makes sense. That's, that's something that has been really tricky for me with the first week that I played the weapon. I was always like kind of hitting, just hitting toes with... Yeah, like just kind of fucking like bumping up against them. I was like, I I should be somewhere else. I don't know where that somewhere else is yet. Part of mm -hmm. getting a, the weapon on a team with a pencil is finding that. Mm -hmm. For here, I think you really want to be in a position where, because it was like your your ten attack player gets kind of caught out here by the city two gal. Mm -hmm. I think you want to be in a position where you can back up players like that and just throw in on their fights. Okay. So, like, would you say, like, I should be, like, down off the grates? Because, like, I feel like it's just, like, really scary spot, especially on mincemeat, because there's no, like, easy way to back up without just getting called yeah. out. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and look at your perspective here to make it more clear. Okay. So, like, for this, instead of taking that squid roll, I would, I would usually just start throwing a couple vertical slashes, because, remember, you have, you have baboos in the range with those. Like, okay. if you're, if you're taking, especially, you also have cooler here. Mm. So, you don't... You're down one, but you don't need to give up that much space. Okay. And you can always fall back towards the left side. Mm-hmm. Because usually if that area... Like... If you can fall back that way, it's because there's someone in that space. But as Stamper, you're one of the people whose job it is to keep people out of that flank that they just took where they t went off the truck towards the left. Mm. Usually, like, on... It's, it's a weird map to do it on, but you'll get a lot of fight positions like that, where I would kind of, like, slash across mid and try to hold that left side, and if I'm going to fall back, I'm going to want to do it to the left. Because okay, even if you can't okay. get all the way back on your flat, you can usually get far enough to jump out if things go really wrong. Mm -hmm. Of course, I can see you probably... I guess you, you might be getting set up for crab, and that's a thing that does complicate it, and complicates mm -hmm. this weapon with the backline in general. But when you're down one, you're not probably going to get positioned if you're not already. Okay. I think I would have liked to see you help your T-Tech in that fight instead. This crab okay. is just a little bit early. I think you could wait for your teammates to land. It's like... Because you see, you kind of got shredded yeah. out of it. <laughs> you can see what's about to happen. <laughs> this is a situation. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll go back to your perspective for <laughs> the crowd, but I, I think you could have just waited an additional like second before popping this. It's usually good to delay things, but if everyone lands, you can fight with it. You're not going to get shredded as quickly. Okay, yeah, that's fair.
Dynamo gets a trade. That's Dynamo moment. Okay, slow slow down a little bit on your jump ins. Like you wanna you're staggering a bit, make sure you are regrouping with your team, especially if you've just gone down like after everyone else got in. Yeah. You kinda ran in ahead of the strikes, and the strikes mm -hmm. didn't kinda force that. Let's see here, I like you're still you. you're dropping and looking for a fight immediately after your time <laughs> yeah. just died. Like slow down a little bit. Okay. I if you're someone on your team should probably be giving a comp to like, we're staggering, regroup, you know, mm. wait for each other, be patient. Mm -hmm. Especially because the most valuable thing you're going to do is, like, on defense, try to push back in is get your crab. Mm -hmm. So even if you had charge for it, every time you're going to die, you're losing half of the meter you have left. Okay. So you're, at this point, even if you win this fight and you trade out... It's gonna be crap, it's yeah. gonna be harder for you to get value coming back mm -hmm. to the zone here. Good pencil positions, but that's another. You gotta make sure your front lines are under that ledge if you know that they've had all that space. I like these. I think you should have been looking to the left a little bit earlier just to clear that left side space, though. You're ending up a little bit scattered. But I mean, you got a zone flip, so the game's not over. That's that's a 1v1 on the right side. <laughs> I just saw the T-Tech landed immediately you take a 1v1 with someone. Careful mm -hmm. about that. Okay, nobody went down to their Zuka here. You got a good picks. Daimo was a little bit behind. I like I like the motions of the T-Tech getting behind them, but there's nobody set up to play off of that. Uh, nice, nice, okay. Good position. Okay, backing up. You got out of that situation, that's very nice. Ooh, is it gonna be a triple? Nah, not quite. Alright, so that that broadly was more of the kind of team stuff I'd like to see. Mm -hmm. I think that there could have been a little bit of like work on the timings there at the end with like the t your TO Tech players just kind of was a little bit too long on the rotate. Nobody else had managed to live long enough. But, I mean, mm -hmm. you were contesting the zone for a long while. It was a while before everyone went down. The enemy team had to really force through to do much about it. So you were mm -hmm. playing a really strong neutral game. It just kind of happened that they cracked through before you could. I'll go back to the last around, probably around here, to look at how that closed out. Like, I really like getting that thought. I think this is maybe a bit of overextension, but I mean, the pull's there, and the retreat to heal is really nice. Stamper being up that far, like, going down there is pretty fine because you can still hold. Mm -hmm. But this is another case of, I'm gonna look at your perspective actually to see. Mm, okay, you're kind of looking for the jump here. You're a little bit, a little bit tunnel vision on that top left. Again? Totally, yeah. I, I wanted that charger dead so bad because I kept... Yeah, us, uh, my was like our enemy number one in this game. Yeah, and 52 would always be there, like, ready to take me, and it happened every time. Charger is dead, but look at how vulnerable that blaster player is on zone, because you just capped the zone. There's, I think there's actually two players, no, there's only one, stuck on it. <laughs> That's so true. Like, yeah. you're you're really tunnel visioning, because if, mm -hmm. if you kill their front lines, their blaster no longer has anyone to prevent you from getting to them. Okay, yeah. Like, and going up that pole in general just leaves you a little bit more vulnerable. You're kind of just egoing, like, whether or not the charge is going to hit that shot. You can, mm -hmm. you, you can shoot over the ledge. I, it's, I usually find it really effective to, as Stamper, throw a mist at the charger, because then, 
like someone else could throw a bomb, you could have your back line get set up into a stronger position for the pencil to actually contest them. Because pencil, mm. I, I think, outranges ZF. If you can get your pencil set up, their ZF can't be. Okay. Yeah, that was that was definitely a television moment. <laughs> but the, the, the subsequent stalling here. I really like the skirmishing from your two tech. I like the flank. I think maybe the the point here. I think your dynamo actually overextends at this point. I want to look at that perspective. Yeah, so here if they're if they're forcing through zone, yeah, you just kind of move towards the zone too much. I think back up a little bit more once once they've kind of capped out and they're going to pressure. Make sure that you're more so defending the space that they're going to want to move into, because that way you could actually you could have done more to defend your charger from these players coming in. Okay. Because look at the. Again. So here you can see that they're kind of going through. Like if you just throw a couple more of those flicks, you'd actually be very helpful on defense here. And then that was just kind of a movement, a moment of moving towards the zone, not quite aware that it was in such a state. That's mostly fine. I, I really like the flank. It's just things didn't line up for it to pop off. If I think if your other players had been alive for two more seconds, you get a triple there. It's just they they had the time to turn around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. So sometimes, sometimes if you're if you notice that the zone's being pushed and you have someone on flank, like someone on flank, you are down an extra person until they arrive where they need to be. So you need to stall a little bit more and be more cautious and take less aggressive positions, make the enemy invest more resources in getting to you. <laughs> and then your flank player, because they've suddenly, because the enemy has over-invested, you can punish them for that. I really like that miss, making it harder for them to play in that zone. Very nice stuff here. I think you could have been a bit more coordinated with Movie 4 at the same time. <laughs> that was just an unfortunate jump. Honestly, if your team's kind of pushed back to that platform sometimes, like, jumps don't save you much time in getting to, to a part of the map like that. Especially with <laughs> the way that Midspeed spawn is shaped. And it's, you're just kind of taking an extra risk. Sometimes it's better not to, but unfortunate situation overall. I like this play. I think I just saw the Dynamo run out of ink on it, though. Ugh. You're you're taking laps. Yeah. I want to look back through that, just give it a, now that I was actually seated in full, probably about here. I think that once you're off of that wall and protected, it's probably better to just jump back than go in around behind them given mm. where your team is set up specifically. Okay, yeah. So if you had if you had people able to move into mid and mm. actually pinch them, that's fine. But see here that your your T Tech and your pencil are like kinda of just getting back in and you're at a one V two very far away from where they can help you. Okay, yeah. Stop from them. I can see you you are kind of making desperation plays here. Totally, yeah. Like, even even if you're this far down, 30 seconds left, down as many points, there is still a shot, but you're gonna throw it away if you just go in without a <laughs> I do that. You're, you're, 
if you do what you just did three times in a row. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, got, I gotta get out of that solo mentality. We panic and then panic. Mm. I mean, that's like one of our biggest problems. And like, we do stagger a lot, especially like after that first wipeout, we just like stagger, stagger, stagger. And try to break it. We gotta try to break it. Yeah. I think just, I wanna. Obviously, I cannot get the comms that y'all are doing, but I yeah. think that it is sometimes important to call attention to the fact that you're staggering and rushing and saying, wait for people. Mm. Now, sometimes I say that, and then a stray Zuka shot just comes down from heaven, and the hand of God mm -hmm. smites me yeah. on the spot for having the audacity to say that we should regroup. Mm. That will happen sometimes, and you will feel stupid being the one to die if you just made the call. Mm. But it can still be important to make calls like that and call attention to the mistakes that you're making. You just want to be careful about the tone and that it's something that you can adapt to in the moment. Mm -hmm. so especially if you're staggering, it's regroup, get specials, we come at this together. Okay. Because especially, especially since you have a really valuable special in the crab, mm -hmm. sometimes you really just want to take a moment charge that and use that to let other people fight under it and inflict chip damage and use that to move forward. I I want to see the endgame stats now. How many crabs did you ever actually use? I remember one. There was probably yeah, more not than pretty. one. I, it was the, it was the one, one that I saw. It was the one that got shredded in two seconds. Yeah. Yeah, char 7, 14, 1 crab. Mm -hmm. And 691 feet. I just slow down a little bit build a few more crabs, maybe put, mm. put a bit of special charge up on your gear, I run special charge up on mine. Okay. And then... Guard guard your T-Tech here, because the T-Tech, especially on this comp, is a skirmisher, it's job is to kind of get attention and survive those fights. Mm. And then, if you're going to be playing Slayer as Stamper, one of your jobs is to... You kind of want to keep your Tenetech tech alive as much as possible, because the longer they're in the fight, the more risk they're in. Okay. One of the, like, this is a thing that FLC says in his document on roles, is that one of the, the best metrics for a good slayer is not their kill count, it is their teammate's death count. Okay. That's a very good way to look at it, yeah. You want to be, end you want to be the one ending the fights and mm. keeping your teammates alive rather than training them out. So I think one thing to do is just keep keep C minus on your screen as much as you can. Okay. That'll also keep you from being the first one up and running in. It'll it'll do twofold for you. Mm -hmm. I wish I could come more right. other players. I just didn't notice as much of them. Part a lot of that is because I have been trying to learn Stamper myself lately. So I more <laughs> yeah. I too did to how it wants to be playing. Uh, no, I'm usually a Zat like support player, so like it's very yeah. it's very gotcha. different. <laughs> yeah, he's he's usually the one. I'm the cooler. I was like, oh, yeah. I want to try pencil, and he was like, oh my god, I can learn stamper now. All right. Yeah. I'm not sure if the other coaches were paying as much attention, but do either of you have notes maybe on someone else that I was not like staring so, at the entire fight? <laughs> so the thing is, is that the comp itself it's a very slow comp. Um, so. You have a lot of zoning pressure, but you have, like, almost no aggression. Yeah, this is a comp um, that slows people down. Stamper Neo very much does that. I mean, you know, it's also Dino. Dino plays a huge bar in the slow. Yeah. Um, so, going for the flanks, that's fine. It's because flanks are always good when, if you can get picks. It's just that you uh, there's uh, you, the overextension is a big problem with midline comps just because usually you can get yourself just kind of get caught out and just have a end up having a wipe a few times mm -hmm. so usually if you're going to run a comp like this you want to have like one back line one midline and two front lines yeah i think instead I think I agree. The Dymo should be swapped for something that is more mobile, not not another heavyweight weapon. And she does swap weapon. after this game. <laughs> yeah, like, I was just trying out weapons. Yeah, like, yeah, like, uh, like the like, actually a good a good weapon I would pair actually would be Orange Zap. Oh, that's true. Yeah, the, the brush here probably went a little bit better. I would mm. I would imagine just for definitely did try to feel the comp out. Um. 
Lux, what match are you doing next? Uh, is it going, is, are you going to select these next zones or the clowns? Because that depend, depends on who speaks next. Um... I was going to go in order of the replay codes, but it's, I guess it's also up to whoever is available to actually commentate and then I'll just pilot the replays for the other two. Um... So, I'm, I'm, I'm covering the bluefin one. So, I think we can just do the bluefin zones, go into the bluefin zones. Um, sure. Just go into the match, I don't need to see the stats. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I accidentally enabled that, I was like, wait a minute, it's, I kinda do like the hiding the stats till the end anyways. Okay, I, another more midline-ish, backline-ish comp. So you're going to be focusing a lot on just painting. So again, you have almost no aggression. It's all about zoning. Mm -hmm. This is also against the same team. <laughs> yes. Oh, and we is. were we were doing cues, so we just got That's that's um, kinda convenient, yeah, honestly. Yeah, we're trying to adjust to that freaking fifty two it is. <laughs> Insane aggression. Okay. Can you back up like ten seconds? Yeah, to, to, to when they entered that whole fight. <laughs> yeah. I'll 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 play, I'll, I'll back up here, pause at the start, and then you can tell me to play, then I'll pause okay. again when it ends. <laughs> or as you, as you can. Okay. Uh, first of all, this, this, is, this is actually a good time for you to stop, uh, stop the video, uh, Lux. Um, so, number one thing, the stamper is the furthest thing forward. Your T-Tech should be the one going furthest far forward. And everyone else is providing cover fire for that T-Tech. Because that's okay. your only source of aggression. Once T Tech dies, you can still trade them out and still take spacing because you're a bunch of zoning weapons. But you can't start zoning if you have no territory to work with. Okay. This is good. I like I like what D minus is doing. You guys kind of did not trade each other out as well though. Uh, XB, this this is that would be the point when you jump out, just because right now you have a sea of enemy ink and you're in a disadvantaged situation. Okay. Yeah, your your special probably is not going to save you in this situation. Better to jump out and have whole meter. Yeah, that's smart. Okay. So you guys need a stall right now. And you guys didn't go for the stall. You, your pencil just went down, which means you need to play a bit slower. And uh, McDonald just kind of you. Drop left. I like what you were doing. It's mm. just you didn't have the numbers advantage to do that. Totally, yeah. I gotta work on being with the team. <laughs> uh, C minus. You should you should have stayed up there and not dropped. Dropping is very dangerous when you're playing a shot and you're having fight against uh, someone with higher higher number advantage than you. Okay. You guys should be able to collapse on this 52 and also this blaster. Yeah, you guys, your guys are really staggered right now. You finally got the uh, 52 out of your base, but that wasted like a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I recommend you try to tell on comms, try to tell, I'm fighting this weapon or I'm fighting this person, just so you guys can collapse faster. Because it really seems like you guys are just picking random targets, hoping you win the 1v1, even yeah, if I, you're in the base. I successfully go back and replay, but I definitely also noticed that, yeah, it looks like... You're you're all in the area, but this fight and also the earlier fight on zone, but especially this series, you're all you're by each other. But it's the 52 is getting to fight a series of one v ones, and the 52 mm. is a weapon that really likes one v ones. You also need to work on your spacing game, McDonald. You you can fight against that shot if you played your distance a bit more. Okay. Yeah. Once again, jumping back into your own base is just a really high-risk, low-reward maneuver. Mm. 
Yeah, Bluefin's one of those maps you kind of have to commit, though. You can't really stall out. Uh, you see, my stream I've gone for the flank. You guys need to paint, and you needed to get a lot of paint so you get your strikes. Um, flanking is really an only option when you have an advantage. Flanking has a di flanking in a disadvantage state can lead to a stagger. You have to be kind of careful how you flank because that you. you because you're now staggering your team. Z minus went down, and then uh, XV went down, and mm -hmm. you guys are just causing a, like a stagger and causing a three, four fights against yeah. you guys. I will add that sometimes, sometimes you will use a flank as a way to get out of a bad state, but you want some other kind of advantage. You usually want to coordinate it with specials or with strong positions from other players. So that they can generate attention. Because if you're on the like, if you're on the flank, you it really matters where the enemy's attention is, and whoever is not generating much attention needs to be moving up, and you need some other advantage to be able to do to do that as well. Yeah, one for one trade. Okay, this is a good setup for where the jet is. Pencil just went down now. Jet should not be in the zone. You guys need to stay up on the ramps. Of like ten seconds, Lux. Yeah, that seems good. Cause you had full advantage right now. Yeah. Um. So I like the position you were taking with the pencil. It's just that finding the shot. I mean, you could also just bait the shot into coming to you, and let your teammates kind of just. Pre-fire the shot. Um, this is a very risky move from you, McDonald. Especially since this shot knows you're kind of coming after it. Mm -hmm. um, you need to be playing a little bit around cover, just because if you're going to go try to melee a shot, you kind of have to play super safe. Yeah, I was trying to play around that um that mid like wall section, but um he popped Zuko, so I was like, okay, now's a chance. If he's not, I, I don't know, he was focused on me already, but he was, and I just got taken out for it. Yeah. This is when you you guys need to jump out. You guys are in a disadvantaged state because there's so much enemy ink around you guys. Because when that when that zone gets capped, it's gonna start moving backwards. <coughs> and you can kind of uh, uh, rotate yourselves back into where that zone is going to be. That's the one benefit of Bluefin is you know where that zone is going to change yeah. and how you can change the way you move so uh, you can put the zone into your advantage. If you jump back, you're basically making your respawn shorter, which means you would be back at the same time as your front lines respawning in here. And instead, you enter another stagger. You have you have strikes ready, and you had strikes ready. Um, so I I I understand you're focusing, but you don't really have the luxury of time. You kind of guys you guys have to just kind of to go and use a lot of specials just so you can get yourselves back more buffer time. Because right now you have to make a desperation, but you have to ignore your opponents. Um. Because and because when you so a key thing I like to try to say is when you have when your opponents have like twenty seconds left or twenty points left uh, uh, left in a match, you have to go for a desperation play. If they're in your face, you kind of have to ignore it, and you kind and you just have to work together to ignore the enemies. Let them chase you. If they chase you, you can potentially punish them. But your yeah. focus is the objective. Yeah. Not the opponents. Sometimes you could like put a suction bomb or a mist in their way that'll slow them down in getting to you. Just whatever little bit you could do to 
by yourself time is is kind of what you're we have to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would recommend you, uh, McDonald, try to focus on not uh, try remember like the UI above and just look above and see whether you have the numbers advantage for going the flank. That kind of goes for anyone trying to go for a flank. Check the UI if you have a numbers or special advantage. If you do, you that is probably a safe flank. Otherwise, try to think, if I die, will this flank go bad and will be in a stagger? Because you need to be super conscious of that when you're on your flanks. Okay. Um, but there's not a lot of notes um, I have since a lot of the mistakes were pretty much the same mistakes that were in happening in the mincemeat one. You guys are just a little bit too fast for your own good. Mm. So again, you're, when you're playing with zoning weapons, play it slow and let the enemies come to you. Okay. Um, but yeah. Uh, the next match would be the Clan Blitz on Crab Leg. PT, are you here? Yeah, I'm here. Just give me one second. I'm just trying to finish up quick some food. Just give me two seconds. Okay. All right. Um, is there any questions you have, Golden Bear, Kudos, that maybe I could explain? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, do you have um. any tips for um, when and where I can place cooler better? Uh, okay. Uh, hey Lux, can you replay Bluefin Zones? Yes, I think we can look from... from perspective, yes. Yeah, go from the perspective, uh, and just fast forward. Because I can't, because on overhead it's, view... It's very difficult cooler... to tell when cooler yeah. is yeah. used. Yeah. They should really put, like, some kind of icon for it in Yeah, it's play. just, I, I literally picked up pencil, like, two days ago. <laughs> so I'm trying to get good at, like, the cooler placement, because that's, like, the biggest strength of the weapon. I think we could actually... Mmm, this feature does work. Uh, so... there's one cooler. Yeah, let's, let's just, let's just go cooler. to when that... Well, let's, let's look at when you had full... Or close to full meter as well, because we can... What's... Yeah. Which is the fast forward button again? That one. Yeah, it says, yeah. There it is. So you're half, half the cooler, you die, so you're losing half your charge, you're going at 25%. Okay, I think you could avoid that Zuka. That Zuka was pretty predictable. Yeah, uh, half yeah, the Zuka. Half... Okay, you, you are the cut. I yeah, think you, I should more, you should take more. You should take more right peak angles. You, yeah, I also play a bit slower. You kind of just walk for and hope your snipe yeah. position's not going to get pre-fired immediately. Just because of how open that elevator is. Like this, and they know you're gonna want to be up there. I have not seen the special charge get full once. There it is. And here's the thing: you guys have a numbers disadvantage, which is good. And you die, so you're losing fifty percent. We might want to look at the other game for this too. <laughs> yeah. So here, like you see, you see a lot of paint going out on the right. You're still okay. You have three, three up. This is a bad cooler. You need to be clo the coolers need to be closer to your teammates and closer to your objective. Honestly, I think but I've got to look back at the state because I don't think it's an awful cooler. It's well, yeah, I think it depends I, on I, remember, I, I don't remember. I don't remember. But I think I so because the, so the, the enemy there's, team there's, is like all throw down. Yeah, the enemy team is two down. People are respawning. There's nobody in the space in front. Okay, so yeah, it's, it is. It's risky because it requires okay. your teammates to drop here. Oh, actually, yeah. Okay, actually, that cooler is fine. I didn't realize both XV and C minus were behind you. Yeah, they, um, they had both yeah. just jumped in here. Like usually, it's better to place cooler slightly where your teammates want to go rather than where they are currently, just because you want to be like moving forward whenever you have the opportunity. And if you place it where they are now, in that amount of time, one of your teammates that might want to move forward might have to wait for it or move back slightly. 
But right, it's, that it's cooler. That, yeah, but that cooler was exactly when your teammates were getting to the yeah. it, from the drop, so that was fine. I think that one yeah, was I good. Yeah, I tried to think of like where cooler. they're gonna be passing because I don't want it to be like in the way or like body blocking their shots either. So I kind of like when I notice I have a lot of jumps in cooler, I just throw it down to where I think they're gonna be running past instead yeah. of where they're gonna be. Cooler, cooling where people are jumping to is very common and usually very good. You can say this is the rest of this. Yeah, you have very uh, close to full meter. That's it's really important to yeah, jump out jump there. I think that we're not going to see much more in the way of. Yeah, I think this is. Dark, I think though. that's where the lockout happens. <laughs> yeah. the, the game ends like ten seconds after that. I don't think we're going to see much. So while we're waiting for Peach, you'll look at the. Um. Are you ready? Oh. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I think, I think we too. I think we can look at. We can at least look at the graph view and then let's fast forward to those moments. Yeah. I think my placement in this game was a little rough too because it was like I'm still not used. It's like when you learn splash, how to play oh. splash balls, you're like not used to how far or how close they're gonna go. We're blue this time. I don't. I don't oh, we're blue. Okay. We're blue this time. It's uh, we just oh, not okay, have yeah. to on our weapons. That's that's that that's that's that stamper. That stamper. That stamper. Yes. Uh, you have uh, three. I'll up. just come off my nose ring. Yeah, you you really want to put no, it no, forward no, towards yeah. the zone here, <laughs> or in the zone. No one can grab that. They have to go. It was backwards. an accident too. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think, think you're... I, I was like, I'm so sorry. You, I think it's so you, you, you want to? It's good blocking yourself. It's good to jump with them because you kind of got hit by the collision there. Plus, jumping just gives you more range on them in general, slightly. Yeah. Uh, let's see, there's another cool. Around here. Okay. Close the cooler. Close the cooler. Got cooler three up right now. You don't. You, okay, that's actually fine. That's you good because it gives your teammates yeah. resources to move in with. Yep. Yeah. Lottery Zuka. Yeah. That was that was a good Zuka, uh, not Zuka. Good cooler. Uh, your teammates, I think, needed to collapse on a single point. Though. That was the issue with that one. Yeah, I think the cooler was not really as much the issue there. Okay, plus the cooler. Four up, actually. Okay. This is all right. That one, I uh, think, throw it a little bit less on the zone. Yeah, I think I meant to throw that one like where the line is on the zone, not like in the middle of it. That might just be getting a feel for how far it'll go and what the arc of it is. Yeah, like, I'm still getting used to, like, where it's gonna go when I'm high uh, uh, So when you throw cooler, you can, it tells you a little bit, like, where that cooler is gonna go. Kind of like the same thing as, like, when you throw, like, a certain, like, bomb, it tells you, like, a trajectory. Mm -hmm. so, so you can try, like, keep an eye on, like, that trajectory line. Yeah. Okay, three up. Two up. This is this is fine. I think it's that a one bit could've, early though. That one could have waited a bit longer for your teammates to be respawning, because now now the timers are ticking down. I want to see if everyone actually does get this. Okay, you just don't no, pick it up. That no, Stamper didn't get the cooler. Stamper didn't get the cooler. Oh no, Stamper did and immediately died. Okay, yeah. that but that was close. Stamper almost did not get a cooler. Yeah. I'll, I'll look back from their perspective, you, we might see it blinking. Yeah. They got- they got the jump in. Okay, it wasn't- it wasn't blinking yet, they actually had pretty good- And then it started blinking as soon as they died. Yeah. I think that- so you could've waited like two seconds, but overall putting it on that platform was fine, it- The biggest just ones early. were just trying to get the ones into the right position in mid is just- your mm -hmm. your sense of where you want it to go is good. It's just getting it there is this next step. It looks like. Yeah, mm -hmm. just just uh, try it if you want. Go in the practice lobby and kind of just jump and like hold that R button, and you can just keep an eye on that trajectory line and then throw how you want to throw it. As you do that, you get to feel like how the larks happen instinctively, so you don't have to waste time um, throwing it. Uh, so you can search by cooler. Go, I think, Zap. Zap or... will easily be the... Yeah, Zap will target. 
I mean, pencil theoretically, pencil there. would get, probably get the fastest, but, um, no. Yeah. And you could actually, you remember, you could just kind of, especially with the cooler, you could just walk around with it. Yeah. So you could, you could actually just take the wand and, like, test it and figure out, like, okay, where's, where's it gonna go here? Oh, this you can see, you can see it does, it has the potential to go quite far. I could actually, I could get to bounce off of this. Yeah, I've seen clips where people, like, bounce the cooler off of walls to get in the right spot. Don't gotta worry so much about that, really, but... Yeah, a lot, a lot of times, you know, that's something you don't really plan on. Unless you yeah, really you, know you, what you you're doing. You can get it, like, over there or something. Yeah, just, do, just a little bit of, like, getting a feel for it. Mm. Um... I would say, so, I think that's... For, for everything, for us two lux, it's now Peachy's turn. I believe so. Yep. Clay Blitz on Crab, like, alright, this is my, like, one of my favorite maps, so... It's I, really fun. I, I, I like love this. Yeah. Good. Let's see what we got here. Oh! Good looks almost in this one. Cab, yeah, yeah I, was doing, I was doing key practice. <laughs> <laughs> alright, Pencil, Rush Nouveau... Or ask Weezer, so we are blue shot. team. Yeah. All right. Okay. I like the cob, especially for this map with that rain. I quite like it. This is post patch, right? So the rain does things. Oh. Yeah. 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 This is from yesterday. The last night. Yeah. I mean, it has to be post patch for us to watch it. <laughs> All right. Can we go back just a little bit? Yes. I'll go back to where that fight up. started. I want to see the opening here. Okay, so C minus is sitting over here on left, along with the brush. The brush is really out of play here, um, just for this first fight. But like, I don't see how it goes. Um, the stamper sitting up top, trying to push range. Okay, pause it here. So the brush is just sitting there doing nothing. Um, like the stamper is down there, and the shot is. I think taking a 2v1 with the other shot and squeezer, um, theoretically, the brush should be putting down beacons up there and then rushing down to try to support, um, and just kind of playing it kind of stealthy, kind of smart. Um, because your weapon doesn't have a whole lot of range, you want to play it off, off angles, you want to play off height, you want to play fall off, which is one of the strong suits of your weapon on this map. Mm. Um, so just keep playing just a little bit. Oh, I, yeah, I, so I, I would like to add that even your. There. I like to add that even the pencils pretty far back, I think you want to be trying to set up to take a more forward position to contribute mm -hmm. to more forward fights. Yeah. Pencil, once you, like, take mid, you really want to snap Pencil on the middle grade. So your shot does get the triple, which is insane. So that's so all... good. Alright. Let's see here. This goes crazy. See, a little bit of ball fumbling, but C-minus does get the ball eventually. Gets one Zuka. Okay, I like where that brush was. Um... But maybe a little bit too early on the push. It is okay to take that slow. It's, it, it is okay to wait for, like, rain. Or that, wait for that crab to pop before pushing in so far. Especially on this map. It's really hard to push through a ramp. Yeah. And your pencil is really forward putting in clams. But I want to see the pencil back off here and try to take a more... Kind of, like, pokey position. Especially on top right, if you can get up there. Because mm -hmm. two down, it's just you and C-. minus. Yeah, C minus should not have pulled back that far first. Just, just gonna let you get out. Ooh, okay. Nice job of the brush just trying to keep that really just kind of at bay. Alright, we're adjusting measures to top group play. Uh here C minus, I I prefer to see you Yusuka. Just to get them off, just to guarantee the push. Um, like you guys do get the wipeout, which is good. The Zuka would just guarantee that and keep them away for soon. Just get them out, because that that top area is really hard to control, especially when you're snapfire preemptively. Busy. Okay, can can we go back there to see what happened? Yes. A little bit further for the entire retake. Okay, so the wipeout. 
panning up, which is good. Uh, can we see a map view real quick? Oh, like, uh... I, I just want to see where the, if we have any beacons. How do I do that again? You just gotta, like, click play. A little further oh, back. Do it. Okay, I can't Okay, we have to one beacon. Try to have at least two upon all time. Try, okay. you know? Always have to, but it's, it's nice. Okay, so... Suka comes out, fires off one shot, gets the squeezer. They fire off their counter, Suka. Stamper's in a really bad spot here. Um, Brush, you should have waited. Because we can't capitalize off that ball right there a whole lot. They're going to get a pity for that, but you could have saved your Stamper. Yeah, you just get the ball in and just kind of lower penalty, but like, get nothing out of it, and they got a free ball. Up pencil right here. Instead of backing all the way off and grabbing that ball, it would have been more ideal if you sat on those middle grates to just keep them locked in. Like they don't have the range to get you, and even if Suka pops, just get behind cover and try to like watch it. Um, the one thing I have to say is when you're at disadvantage, you don't want to give up mid. Like if you have someone in mid just standing there, it'll make them take it more slow. Unless they have the special to get rid of you, they're gonna have to play it safe, especially with your range on this map. Um. And Elixir is in such an awkward spot with um, his pencil that he can't exactly directly deal with you. Um, so it's okay to sit there for longer. Like, you, you did hold space in mid, but against a faster paced team, you would have lost mid really quick. Mm -hmm. okay, push this back in. Yeah, doing a good job here, just kind of playing mid, kind of playing the waiting game. A brush right here, like you're doing a really good job, kind of sharking, um, and you are pulling some pressure away, which is good. But your team is trying to push the fight back there as well, so that is what that is. That kind of that I made earlier with flanking. You got to be really careful where the attention is and whether the attention that you're pulling is helping your team or not. No, if you pulled the attention. But, like, nobody, your teammates were struggling. Nobody to could do anything fight. with it. Me, me personally, what I would have done is I would have jumped into the pencil and assisted, and then jumped right back over to that beacon when it was done to pull attention so your team can kind of, like, um, pincer them. Just, um, how how much sub power are you running on that beacon? Um, I think I was just unlocking, uh, ability slots. Okay. So, I'm not quite sure. Alright, if you're running like a main, that's more than enough to kind of bounce in and out of combat really fast. That's what's so fun about that brush, is that it kind of like, is all over the place, you can just warp wherever. Um, so like assisting with a team fight and then backing out just to kind of create a pincer effect is really, really nice for that weapon. Especially with rain, if you like, with the new buff as well, if you're pulling attention, the rain just lets you pull it even longer because of its healing properties. Um, and your team comes and clutches it up for the end. But you gotta like, be with your team certain times to like assist in fights because your damage is nice to have chip fall off. Okay. I like the stamp position here. It's kind of annoying that ledge, especially with Suka coming out. I like that. Do we notice the Tetris, or did you guys not notice it at, at that point in time? Um, I do not think we noticed them then, because okay. we were we were all so focused on the um the ramp to yeah, we... funnel in. Yeah. Uh, can we zoom into the pencil's perspective? I don't know where they're at on they the are... neck axis. Which... We're on on, on a Z axis. Okay. Should I say. Okay, so you would want to be um on on those grades. You can yeah. watch those Tetris and see them and make that call. Mm -hmm. Like, in any time you're in mid, you need to be on those grates. You have more yeah. sight lines. As far as I'm able to tell, every time you've been in mid, it's looked like you've been on the lower side. Yeah, I'm you... scared of the grates. I grates lie. are very <laughs> important. You shouldn't be scared as a sniper rider. Like, as as a charger, sure. But as a splatling or a sniper rider, you should not be scared. You have so yeah, much. I'm very, I'm you want to run some run speed. Play. And, like, they have Zookas, but the thing to be aware of is... If they use a Zooka to get you off of grates, they used it. They've used an entire Zooka to move you. Move you. I can so, also just hit the squid button and just get off the grates. Yeah, you want to really yeah. prioritize trying to look like you want to be careful and look for those Zookas and try to play safe. 
but whenever you're actually doing that, like, you're drawing a lot of attention is good because you should have front lines in the way that prevent them from being able to easily do much. Yeah, because I, I would just have all of them under me to, like, keep me alive so I can keep them alive. Uh, what yeah. was the brush trying, trying, trying to do there? Let's, yeah, let me revisit that. Probably actually even extra two seconds on second thought given the timing. Yeah, I, I'd recommend against me, like this te my team. Uh, you guys were kind of just pushing through the ramp and ignoring the flank route that Crab Leg has. The reason why Crab Leg is such a good map is it has actual flank options. <laughs> now, it's okay to play slowest brush. Like, you you, you were cooler, so, like, alright, not a big deal. But, like, playing brush patient is the only way to play it. It was, well, it's not the only way to play it, but the only way to get competitive success type of brush. Is a patient brush is a good brush. Um, same thing with roller; they're very similar. They just play it safe. Like you have beacons, you have beacons on like flank graphs and stuff, and just kind of bob it between them. Also, you, I I think a slightly better beacon is just on the other side of this piece of terrain on the right. It is. Okay. Like, putting it on the unicable, that's easier for them to shoot out, more likely to be noticed, less of a safe position when you jump to it. Put it one foot to the right, and it's like a world better. Yes, that 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 beacon is also like annoying to look at because when you're looking at the map, you gotta like turn your back from like mid and shoot the yeah. beacon, and it can pop out behind you. Like even if it takes them an extra second to get to it, or even half second, sometimes that's all you need. Yeah, you just gotta rush Here, I there. think you could play under the ledge and shoot up onto it to so, like paint ramp a bit more than just run into the middle of them. Because it's, look, yeah, if your pencil could really, like, look at, if you were on Grace's pencil, look at how much, look at how unopposed you would be. Now, yeah. Elixir cannot challenge you. He's going to be scared of something underneath the ledge or Asuka coming out of bullion. Or crab, even. And now we're going back into kind of a skirmish. Oh, okay. All right, that Zuka really clutched up the fight there. And the brushed one on the left. Yes, yeah, so you're forcing Elixir back. So at this point, I would just be throwing bombs, especially and just trying to farm as much like my special. Like Rain or Zuka here would be really helpful. Crab would be just nice if like you got a pick or two and you're able to like pressure them. Um, Something out is good. You don't really need a ball. Let's put that one go. At this point, yeah, there you go. I would just throw that ball away. It keeps you hidden. Having the ball is still sometimes helpful in advantage because of the way special, special. works, though. Yeah. So, um, one thing to be mindful of is the team with more balls held. God damn it. The team holding more power clams <laughs> has more special. Has more special. Or if they both have the same number, the team losing gets the special advantage. I like the Zuka's kind of holding them off. Just like guaranteeing them not doing anything. People will say it's ever killed, but I quite like that play. Yeah, like no no reason not to win more. If yeah. you're going to win, make sure yeah. you win. <laughs> yeah, we were like, we can't throw last second. I was just like, it's already got, I already got like this. Sure. The other thing, like, um, especially in, like lower level, especially like that, I've I've learned by playing with higher level players. Um, people say cracking cheese is a pain. Um, and, like yeah, it can be right. Um, and here you didn't face it, but like in the future with your playstyle, that brush could be really helpful against cracking cheese. Um, if you hear a Kraken being popped, if you can't shut him down before it's popped, if you have beacons behind them, get the brush behind and just kill the jumpers yeah, the, the, before the Kraken's the able to get seek in. And, seek and destroy the people that are just going to be sitting staring at their map. Oh, yeah, that's a really good not, idea. They're not <laughs> like, paying attention. Just like, look, they're, they're pro they probably have their map open or hovering that player. They are not looking for you. <laughs> mm -mm, and later we, later that night, we dealed with a lot of Kraken cheese. You're going to. Especially in CCA. 
Um, there's a lot of people who rely on Kraken cheese, they even do. like just a lot of teams do. Um, I I know I I did the pre not season yeah. four but season three we relied on it. Um, uh, but it, it it leaves you wide open if the team's say, playing too fast. Yeah, my my other piece of yeah my piece of my piece uh, my main piece of advice against Kraken cheese is that those teams usually are not that great to at actually taking space <laughs> back. And because they're not built for it. So, like, mm -hmm. if you just hold mid and play Clamicon and just grab all the clams on the map the entire game and, like, make them struggle to retake, those teams usually aren't built to deal with those situations. They're they're built to, like, have a stall situation and then slowly build power clams. Mm -hmm. But if you're just faster than they are, they will probably just fold. <laughs> Even like high mid or even like plus players I've seen in send up queue that I've fought and or watched, like they all crumble when they're playing crack and cheese to a team that just like is faster takes than they space are. Faster. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. what are you gonna do? Like the Kraken's in okay, ignore the Kraken. Maybe you have one strike chooser on it just in case your team fails it, but like if you just rush down the other people, what is the Kraken gonna do? He can't help his team. Mm hmm That's true. Um Yeah. Yeah, and uh, as you move up, you you can punish Kraken, so they only get one and one at most. So one power clam, one normal clam. Yeah, so, like if, if you have one T Tech or whatever sitting by the goal with strikes ready, you pop it, and even if they get one in, the team is dead because of strikes, and the Kraken yeah. user is not going to pursue you in Kraken because he's trying to hold like that one area for them to jump in on. And if you're built to be fast, they just gave you a wipeout, even if they technically have the lead. If they just went three down, and you're playing a fast team, you suddenly just have the ability to take the entire map, because they probably, like, a, a team that is super built to do this might have cooler setups so that they're actually back fast. You're gonna run against a lot of Kraken Seas teams who do not bother using cooler, and thus leave just themselves just... very, very open to you just taking the entire map. They just say, play, play Kraken! <laughs> it is really everyone, hard to counter if you're not playing. ready. Like, mm -hmm. you will lose to, to that team if you're not ready for it, and you're not, like, playing faster than they are. You're gonna have to. But um, fortunately, it's very telegraphed the moment you see a 96 Cal Deco. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, also, like, mid-game, mid, mid if you see him have special, try to, like, target him with bombs. Like, he's gonna play stupid and guaranteed probably go in front of his wall, or get behind this wall and throw a bomb at it. It instant kills him. Like, just keep mm -hmm. bomb pressure on him. He's going to die eventually, whether he pops it or not. Like, you're gonna put so much pressure on him. Or you can bait out a Kraken. Sometimes baiting a Kraken is just so helpful. Because then you just can't use it to goal, and you can use it to deal with your team. Mm -hmm. So, like... Also, I, I do know, um... I know, like, if you throw a perfect bomb, like, as someone's landing, it can kill them before they even get to throw the clam. But can a strike kill someone? Like... Yes. Yeah, a strike, you strike can kill them in midair. It's okay, good. That's, that's really so, good to know. <laughs> the, thing, the thing about bombs that is a little bit tricky is the way that the... Like, it, it can work, but you need to be very well timed within about three frames on the explosion. Because yeah, there's, there's a very particular way that bomb damage is calculated. And I think that the window for bombs killing on jumps is actually different from main weapons. Because you of mind how if I show a game with plus players that I played against the Sendow that is Kraken Cheese and how to counter it? Because I have a good replay from Sendow for that. Sure, yeah. Will you stream that, or would you like me to enter the replay code? Uh, I, I have the capture card. Cool. Let me just get it. I, I thought you did. I wasn't sure if your setup was... So, I mean, 